Alright, hello. In this tutorial, I will show you how to make a sword from start to finish plus heat treating. So it will be a complete tutorial of everything you need to know. Um, and hopefully your sword will be able to do what you're seeing right here. First thing you're going to want to do is uh, figure out a sword model you're going to want to do. If you're not just going to like freehand it and figure it out as you go, then uh, do a little bit of research. Um, I googled katana, looked at some pictures, and then I looked up the dimensions, which was actually a lot trickier than, uh, than I thought it would be. Turns out um, they have a very precise way for measuring a katana for each person, and I found a really good description on Yahoo. So I got it from there, and I used a 1 to 3 ratio. The next thing I did was buy my metal from the hardware store. I got a 3 foot long, um, 8 inch thick uh, piece of steel from the welding section. And I put duct tape on it um, to give me a general outline of the design of my sword. And I did that instead of writing on it with Sharpie, because when I do a sword it gets really hot and uh, all the Sharpie kind of disappears. But leaving duct tape on there, you can kind of see where you're going the whole time. It does peel a little, but uh, I just cleaned it up on the bench grinder. So if you're just doing a smaller sword or a small knife, then just go ahead and use Sharpie because it's kind of difficult to get off. But uh, using duct tape will help you get a lot more of an accurate um, design and link. And then right here, what I'm doing is I'm making sure my katana has the curve in it. Um, that's a big part about the katana is its curve. So I flipped it around and just made sure I had a good inside and outside curve. So when you're making your sword, um, that's one good reason to actually look up the design of your sword, is so you can get all the little details like that in. And then right here I'm scraping off the duct tape, which is actually difficult. This is the one con to doing it, um, other than the fact that you get great measurements, uh, is scraping it off because it gets really stuck on there pretty good, but once you get one piece up, it just all peels off pretty easily. Alright, I'm not going to go into great detail on this next section, um, but what I did is I wanted to forge out my tang to make it a little bit longer, because I couldn't get it longer than a 3 foot piece of steel. So I took about the last 6 inches or so of it, and uh, ended up hammering it out. Um, so I fired up my forge, and if you have a longer piece of steel you can do um, it by just grinding it down and cutting it off, but I didn't really have that option. So I actually had to stretch out the metal, so I just heated up my forge and hammered it out. And since I don't really have a lot to talk about on this, if you have a question just leave it in the comments and I will answer it as best as I can and give you other video links. But right here that's where I started and so I only had about 6 inches and I ended up getting uh, about 3 more inches out of it and then I just cleaned it up on the belt sander. So it ended up working out really nice. And then I took the entire sword to the belt sander and uh, polished up everything. You're seeing this 200 times faster, but uh, I did this for about an hour, so I'll just cut to when it was done. Alright, and here it is when it's done. Um, you can see it's just polished up really nice. I ended up putting the blade on it, but not completely. You can't really tell, but it's about um, probably the width of a dime, um, so it wasn't extremely sharp yet. I wanted to wait until after I heat treated it to put like the fine and final edge on it. Um, but you want to get it really thin. Um, if you make it with the finest edge on it already, before you heat treat it, there's a chance you could like crack it or get a chip in it. So I just left it um, with a little bit of space in there. And then here's a picture of it. So it was looking pretty nice at that time. Really nice and polished up. Next thing I worked on was the hand guard, which I just took a square piece of metal and grind it down the sides into an oval. You have a lot of options of what you can do here with this. Um, you just want to get whatever piece of metal you have and then find the center. So right where those two um, accesses meet, that is the center. So I ended up drilling that out and um, drilling along the length of it so I could get um, four nice holes in it. And I ended up cutting those out um, so I could stick the actual sword through that and then I would slide it on as a handguard. I cleaned it out really well with the Dremel too. Um, if you don't have a Dremel, you can go ahead and just use the drill bit and that will work fine to clean it out and it works really well. I've done it multiple times. And then I just ended up uh, polishing off all the Sharpie and making it look real nice on the belt sander. So at this point, this is what my katana looked like. I had the handguard and the 
blade ready, and so it was looking really, really nice. Then I engraved a couple words in Japanese on it, which I'll leave a link in the description to my engraving video, because I'm not going to go into detail on that, since I already have the video made. So, then I heat treated my katana, and I actually have a video already on heat treating, so um, I'll leave a link in the description for that video on how to build a forge and heat treat. Basically the only difference between doing that and this is you're going to need a bigger forge and a bigger quench tank, which you can do with each of those easily. And this is my sword after I heat treated it. Um, I just sanded it off. Um, I hand sanded it because I didn't want to use the belt sander. Um, that's one side after I hand sanded it for about five minutes. And this is it after I completely hand sanded it. So after hand sanding, the last thing you need to do is put a handle on it. I just put a piece of copper pipe on. You can do whatever you want if it's PVC or wood. And then you just have to get a pommel. I used the end of a railroad spike and I just threaded the end of the sword and then put threads inside of the railroad spike. And that's all you have to do for your handle. And I didn't get to go into as much detail as I wanted to on a lot of things in this video because I had a lot of trouble with it. So if you have any questions, just go ahead and ask and I'll give you like two paragraphs of an answer and some other video links and I'll do as much as I can to help you. So make sure to ask those questions if you have them. So thanks for watching. Um, if you like this video, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. And if you want to see more pictures like what you're seeing now, um, then you can check out my Instagram, which is Chris 12 Alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.